It was uh, really great to have the gospel text read the way that it was. Uh, it gives it a little bit more life and energy. We understand kind of the, the story of it, and we're familiar with the story of the blind man being healed. But there are a lot of details to it that are a little confusing, I think. Um, one of the details is something that touches on a very human presupposition that goes back beyond history. The idea that if bad things happen to somebody, or perhaps if good things happen to somebody, that those things are deserved in some fashion. If you had made different life choices, this wouldn't have happened. Or they must be a really good person because all of these great and good things have happened to them. This idea that things are deserved, which then allows us to kind of free ourselves from the idea of empathy from those who are struggling, you know, because, well, maybe they deserve it. Now, that might seem kind of stark, but there are some phrases that we use in English, and I'm assuming in other languages as well. When something bad happens to us, we might say, what did I do to deserve this? It's just kind of a figure of speech, but the literalness of it speaks to something that we feel in our bones. If I had done something different, this is somehow deserved. I brought this upon myself. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I took Eli to an appointment at a clinic with a really strange name. The clinic's name is the Adult Congenital Heart Defect Clinic at Stanford. It's a relatively new thing because it's been relatively recently in history that there are adults with congenital heart defects. Congenital, from birth, from birth. Here's a big takeaway in the text. All of us come the way we are from birth. <laughs> in this text, we're picking on this poor guy who's born blind. But the reality is, all of us wrestle with aspects of our lives that are related to how we were born. It might not just be because we're the lucky ones that got Uncle Joe's nose, um, but it could be other health issues or other issues that we wrestle with because of birth. And then we go through this life, perhaps lacking or losing the empathy towards those who are struggling. I wanted to share something as I was reading in advance of this sermon, something that came up, and I thought it was interesting. So the text as it was read today, very early on, very early on in the reading, they were very concerned about who had sinned such that this man was born blind. So somebody clearly did something bad and the punishment was God said, I'm going to make your child blind. And in addition to that, I'm going to make your child blind so that later in life, my son Jesus can come along and do this amazing thing that's going to stop the show and create all kinds of reading opportunities on Sunday mornings for generations to come. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that. One of the things that's interesting about this passage is that the words he was born blind are completely manufactured. They are not there at all in the Greek. But the translators felt that those would be cool words to put in. Now, some of that speaks to an Old Testament Hebraic understanding of what's going on in the passage. There are some other reasons for it, but it is in fact true 
that those words just are simply not there in Greek. <clears throat> Eugene Peterson, a famous Presbyterian pastor and theologian who just passed away recently in the last few months, um, has a, a paraphrase, translation's not the right word, a paraphrase of the Bible called the message. And he translates this portion in this way. You're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause effect here. Look instead for what God can do. That is, neither this man sinned nor his parents, but regardless, God's works might be revealed with him. It's a very different rendering of the text as we understand what's going on with Jesus and the blind man. But the other thing that I want you to notice in this text is that it's pretty long, right? In a, you may be seated for the reading of the gospel kind of long, right? This epically long passage, and effectively there is this long discussion by the leadership of the community as to how they can move through this event without having to celebrate what happened. Do you notice that? Do we have to get excited about this? Because he's clearly a bad guy, otherwise he wouldn't have been born blind, and now you've healed of it and, and done it on the Sabbath of all days when you know you're not supposed to be doing that. So there's all kinds of reasons for us to be angry here. Whose fault is this? Blame, blame, blame. The lengths that we will go to to prevent ourselves from celebrating with someone with whom we don't think deserves the good that has come to them, right? It's kind of the opposite of schadenfreude, although schadenfreude still counts too, but kind of the opposite of that, the, the unwillingness or inability to celebrate because we feel the person receiving the good did not deserve it. Now, I know you cannot imagine such things happening amongst humankind, but the fact of the matter is, this brokenness that we experience, the challenges in this life, sometimes are manifested in physical ways, such that someone might not have sight, or they might have to go to clinics with strange names, or any number of things. But the truth of the matter is, we all struggle. We all struggle with brokenness in this life. Sometimes there are things going on in our lives that make being kind to other people very difficult in certain situations. But I think one of the things that we need to remember as we get towards the end of the season of Lent is a healthy reminder that we know where this story is going. Yes, it is going to Good Friday. Yes, it is going to where Jesus is arrested and crucified. But ultimately, we know that this story is going to Easter. An expectation of good news and life where it was not anticipated, it was not expected, it was not deserved. And yet, there it is. What does it mean when we ourselves have received grace and mercy, and yet when we turn to our neighbor, we have judgment and no empathy, thinking, well, I didn't deserve what I got, but you, on the other hand, you did. What does it mean as we move towards the holiest of weeks? A recognition of living through Lent, understanding the most basic brokenness of humankind, the things that keep us up at night, the things that worry us and frighten us, but recognizing that we live through this moment of the year knowing where the story is going. And that changes everything about how we approach this life with mercy and grace for ourselves and especially 
for our neighbor. Amen. Please stand as you are able.